And now our interview with Congressman Leonard Lance, a Republican who recently introduced a bill that the White House did not like. You made some news recently uh, because there was a, a bill in the Senate that Republicans blocked and then you introduced a House version of the same bill dealing with Russian meddling, something I don't think the, at least the Republicans in the Senate wanted to come to the forefront. What, what exactly does your bill say? Uh, first of all, I give a lot of credit to Senator Flake of Arizona, who was the principal sponsor in the Senate along with Senator Coons of Delaware. And I have introduced identical matter. It's a resolution in the House of Representatives. And what it says is that we honor the work of our intelligence agencies and that we back our intelligence agencies up, number one. Number two, we should examine what happened in Helsinki. Number three, uh, the Russian sanctions should be in place fully. And frankly, I think perhaps there should be more Russian sanctions. And uh, I believe that the Russian government is uh, an antagonist to the United States, wishes us ill, that has traditionally been an enemy of the United States. That doesn't mean we cannot uh, try to reach out to the Russian government. But I'm deeply concerned about this. And uh, certainly, the Russians did meddle in the 2016 election and have the potential of meddling in the election process this year. Your president doesn't agree with much of that. And some in your own party don't agree with much of that. What was your intention in going up against them in introducing this bill? Were you making a statement? Absolutely, I was making a statement. It, it, it's a resolution. However, we have put in place sanctions against Russia, and we want those sanctions to be enforced fully. I, I want to move on to one other thing that, that is going to be, that is big to people in New Jersey, and that is the tax cut bill that you voted against. And uh, one of the things that, are, that make New Jersey residents so upset, especially property owners, is the fact that the SALT deduction went away. The Republicans seem to be uh, engaging in a redo. They're calling it Tax Cut 2.0, where they're amending what they considered some of the problems in the first tax cut bill. But SALT isn't in there. Should it be? Uh, absolutely. And uh, the original proposal by Republicans was to eliminate SALT completely, the ability to deduct state and local taxes. Uh, it was uh, increased to $10,000. Now, that's not good enough for me. I did not vote for the bill. And I will continue to work on uh, that issue. But certainly, I favor full deductibility of state and local taxes, because that has been in our tax code historically since the advent of the modern tax code in, in uh, 1913. And I am of the belief that this should be fully deductible, given the fact that New Jersey is a sending state, not a receiving state. We send a lot more funds to Washington than we receive back. And I believe there should be full deductibility of state and local So if taxes. there's not full deductibility, will you vote against it? I'm likely to vote against it. I want to see what the final product is, and I'm certainly working on, on this issue, but I favor full deductibility. So, it, so making, making the uh, individual tax cut permanent isn't good enough for you? That is correct. Uh, it, it is interesting to me that on several key things, the, the Russian meddling now, the tax cut, um, um, the, the repeal of Obamacare when it came to the House floor, you voted against what the president's wishes were mm -hmm. on those key votes. And yet, uh, you're now in this re-election bid, and much of your fate mm -hmm. is determined by the, the president's approval rating. That's got to be frustrating to you. Uh, in 2016, uh, Hillary Clinton carried this congressional district. She won it by uh, 3,800 votes. I won it by 38,000 votes. This is a highly intelligent, well-educated district, and I will be judged based upon my views. And I believe my views in the sensible center are the views of the overwhelming uh, number of residents in this congressional district, the overwhelming majority. I want to deal with the Obamacare repeal vote because your, uh, your opponent has attacked you on it, even though you voted against it on the House floor. He says you voted for it in committee. What's true? Uh, I voted for amendments in committee, not the full bill. And the amendments in committee uh, for which I voted uh, continued protection uh, of those with pre-existing conditions. And then that was modified uh, on the floor. We voted out amendments. The Ways and Means Committee voted out amendments, and then the bill came out of the Budget Committee, and then, of course, 
the final bill was on the floor and I did not vote for the final bill for, for reasons that I have suggested. I want to uh, uh, make better uh, health care policy in this country. I did not favor the original legislation that was passed in the Obama administration. There have been amendments to it, but I think we need to work on it further. And that is true regarding the Republican bill. I predicted that while it might pass the House, it, it would not pass the Senate, and it did not pass the Senate. I think that uh, my views are the views that prevailed. I want to continue to work in a bipartisan capacity on this and every other major issue. Uh, I am a member of what is known as the Problem Solvers Caucus in the House of Representatives, and it, it has to be completely bipartisan, the same number of Republicans, the same number of Democrats. We're at about 50 now, half Republicans and half Democrats, and there are only two New Jerseyans in the Problem Solvers Caucus, Josh Gottheimer, a Democrat from Bergen County, and I. He is a moderate liberal. I am a moderate conservative. I am convinced that it is the best bipartisan group in the House and that the best policy for the nation is from the center out. I, I want to stay on the campaign for one second and then I'm going to move off of it because in the next segment I want to talk about the opioid crisis in New Jersey. Uh, you've attacked your opponent, your Democratic opponent, for as being a carpetbagger, as living most of his life out of the district. Why is that important? Uh, I think it's important to have in the House of Representatives members who understand their district, who have come from their district, who have lived in their district. I have been a lifelong resident of this congressional district, and uh, my opponent uh, first moved into the district uh, less than a year ago. He had never lived in the district previously. Um, He's chosen not to purchase a residence in this district. He has a residence in Washington, D.C. I think it's important to, to live in the district, to know the district, and I assure all of my constituents that I have spent my entire life here and uh, believe that that is the purpose of the House of Representatives historically, to have those who are from their districts go to the nation's capital to represent the views of constituents from the district. He did grow up in New Jersey. He went to grade school, went to high school. That's not good enough? Uh, not in this district. He grew up in Princeton, and if he had wanted to run for Congress from Princeton, so be it. He had never lived in this district until uh, last autumn when he rented a house. He has refused to purchase a residence in this district, even though he owns a residence in Washington, D.C. Uh, I have had a residence in this district for a generation. Uh, my wife and I pay property taxes in this district. I think it's important to have someone serving in Congress who understands the district and who represents the views of the constituents of the district he or she serves. As promised, last campaign question, I do want to move on to the opioid crisis and we'll continue that conversation with Congressman Leonard Lance when Jersey Matters continues.